Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about how to create a simple REST API. The best way to think about a REST API is that think of it, you are approaching your home and in your car, you press on the garage door opener button and then the garage door automatically opens. It's very similar. What is the garage door doing here? The garage door is performing a simple function of receiving the signal from the car and opening itself. So REST API is something similar to that. What happens in a REST API is that the front end application, right? For example, here is a, a big e-commerce application uh, where you are gonna be placing an order uh, to buy products, right? This is convenience store products. When you click on this button, automatically a call is sent to the backend and it's asking for your address. So this is invoking what you call a REST API in the backend, right? So using InnerPlay, it's very easy to build REST APIs, okay? So typically REST APIs use a protocol or a method to, to in a simple form to think about it, uh, called HTTP. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna type in here HTTP and I'm gonna pull in an HTTP receiver or an HTTP request. Similarly, whenever you have an HTTP request, you also need to have an HTTP response, right? So this is what receives the call when you click on a button, right? So now when you have to, when you get a call through HTTP, you also need a function or some kind of a, a process, a custom logic that handles that call, right? So I'm gonna connect the request to the function which can handle the request and then it can send that response or the result to the HTTP response button uh, 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 handler, right? So I'm going to click on this function and then what happens is you see this object called MSG. So what MSG essentially is the message that travels between these these Lego blocks. Between every Lego block on inner play, you have this MSG traveling in between. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say MSG has MSG has a, an object or an attribute called payload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a very simple uh, service. When you call this service, it's going to give information about a user that it has, right? So in this case, I'm just giving information about myself, you know, Brian Satya Nathan, first name Brian, last name Satya Nathan, work email. You can contact me, you know, my company website uh, and my company name, right? Uh, so the in, when I'm sending this information, I'm giving it in sort of a key value pair. So this format is called JSON. So this is a format typically how backend and front ends typically communicate. You can even put simple things like hello world, but I'm doing it in the proper way, sending JSON information between the backend, the REST API and the front end here. And now, since we've done that, and this is JavaScript language or Node.js, so we're gonna close that with a semicolon and we close the function, right? Now, uh, then we need to do now is to make sure, give it a name for our service, right? Let's call our service user, right? So our service is users. Now, when you go to the URL, it'll invoke the user service, right? We could even give it a name here. We could call it HTTP uh, REST request, request and we could call it response, right? And now in order for us to get our function working or deployed, just click on deploy, right? Now, if you go to any of the URLs, let's go to that URL, let's invoke that function, right? When I click on it, say user, automatically the information I send there has already appears here, right? So that's a way I've invoked a backend function and that backend function has given me data, right? And instead of doing a very simple operation like this, it could do a very complex business operation, but we wanna keep it simple for this tutorial. So uh, this is a very simple way to write an HTTP function with just simple two drag and drops or drag and drop of two blocks. Thank you.